I deployed to Afghanistan in 2012 and 2013. Uh, I stepped on an IED and um, as a result, uh, I had to amputate. So I am missing my leg from about right here. My ankle used to be down here. So today is my hometown tour. Uh, coming back from the Paralympic Games, you know, to kind of come back to my community and share my story. I will say chase it. Like, don't let anyone tell you to stop, right? If that is your goal, go out and, and chase it. Because, like, you just, you don't know. You don't know until you try, right? Like, My name is Kevin Feldman. Come on, boy. Nhưng mà căn hộ khán giả rằng à, khán giả có biết người nào sống tại thành phố Westminster học tại trường trung học Westminster và đã trở thành một người Olympian từ Rio cho đến Olympic tại Paris và hôm nay Khang sẽ cho khán giả tìm hiểu và gặp một người người Việt đã sống tại thành phố Westminster đã học trường trung học Westminster và là một người đã có mặt tại cái tế vận hội kỳ vừa qua và anh tên là Kevin Nguyễn, xin khán giả cùng Khang Mình tìm hiểu về Kevin Nguyễn nào, let's go! Thượng sĩ Kevin Nguyễn là một xạ thủ Paralympic quốc tế xuất sắc Là thành viên của chương trình vận động viên đẳng cấp thế giới Và đang cộng tác với đơn vị bắn súng của quân đội Hoa Kỳ ở Fort Moore, Georgia Xuất thân từ thành phố Westminster, California Anh đã tốt nghiệp từ trường trung học Westminster vào năm 2010 và tiếp tục học tập tại trường cao đẳng cộng đồng Golden West. Anh đã được triển khai tới Afghanistan và phục vụ trong chiến dịch. Chỉ 3 tháng sau khi bắt đầu nhiệm vụ, Kevin đã bị một quả IED gắn áp lực đánh trúng trong khi tuần tra bộ. Và đây là câu chuyện của anh Kevin Nguyễn. And we're really excited to have this opportunity and really thankful um, for Kevin being here to kind of give back to us and share his story with us. Thank you for being here. One of the commitments as a principal of Westminster High School I have is really being more intentional about bringing back our alumni. We competed in the same pool, same field that you compete in and how their story has progressed once again. I say thank you for being here. It's an honor to have you back. Thank you, ma'am. And um, once a lion, always a lion. So here we go. Thank you. Uh, I'm gonna just kind of have you go through my story and just kind of tell you how, how I got where I got. Um, I can promise you that I sat in the same seat as you guys, and if I told myself back in 2010 that I would be a two-time Paralympian, I would have never believed you. My name is Kevin Nguyen. I'm a staff sergeant in the United States Army. I currently have 13 years of service. I am an infantryman by trade, so I'm a grunt pretty much. My current job is a competitive shooter and a marksmanship instructor as well. Westminster uh, is my hometown, so I grew up here. Right? My elementary school is Fry River Elementary. I went to Johnson Middle School, and then um, right here, Westminster High School. I spent all four years here. As you can tell, you know, I, I did get to talk to some of my teachers that um, I went to school with. It's really good to see them. I graduated in 2010, and then after 2010, I really went down the street to Golden West College. I went to college for about a year until I realized college is not my thing. I got very bored very quickly. Uh, the Army has taught me one thing that uh, I do not do well in classroom settings. Uh, if I sit in a brief of some sort and it's a PowerPoint presentation, I can promise you that fall asleep. That's just how my brain works. And it took a lot of trial and error to actually learn that. But I, I learned best by doing, right? And so being competitive this year, I did by doing, you know, putting in the practice, putting in the training, day in, day out. 
uh, five days a week, four hours a day, so that's about, uh, about 20 hours a week or so. No. Hi, my name is Kevin Thom Wang. Uh, so today is my hometown tour. Uh, coming back from the Paralympic Games, you know, to kind of come back to my community and share my story with um, aspiring kids and athletes. The Olympics have three different categories. The Olympics are the top uh, athletes uh, in the world. The Paralympic athletes is the same thing, but they are for people who have physical disabilities, such as myself. I'm missing my leg. Uh, I'm a right below the knee amputee. And then there's the Special Olympics or for those who have uh, cognitive disabilities. And so I'm a two-time Paralympian. Okay, so Kevin, I know you share the story of how you lost your leg. Yep. Can you say something really quick? And can you show us? Because I know you, you yeah. feel comfortable showing. Yeah, so um, I deployed to Afghanistan in 2012 and 2013 on one of my patrols. I stepped on an IED and um, as a result, uh, I had to amputate my right leg. And so my prosthetic is right here. So I am missing my leg from about right here. My ankle used to be down here. So, you know, I would say about an inch below, you know, or an inch above the ankle is where I lost it. In 2012, November 2012, I deployed to Afghanistan and went to a place called the Horn of Handy Way. And that's where I spent about three months uh, on the phone before I actually hurt myself. Um, we, uh, our job that day was to go recon the spot that we nicknamed uh, the Dragon Spine. It was just this elevated geographical terrain that gave the enemy an advantage. They could uh, shoot small arm and shoot indirect fire. So pretty much they could shoot and lock quarters into the places that we During that patrol, we were about, let's say, 200, 200 meters from our objective. From where we were supposed to be, uh, I stepped on an IED. February 2nd, 2013 is a day that I will never forget. It, it lives in my brain. It's going to live in my brain for the day I die. So I remember stepping on that bomb. Uh, it was pressure activated, it's victim activated, so you, I had to step on it in order for, to go off. And so I would say Probably one of the most scariest things that's ever happened in my life, right? Um, I remember that um, one of the first thoughts that came to my mind was instead of thinking, holy crap, am I dead? Am I alive? Am I in heaven? Like, where am I? Instead of that, my first thought was because I stepped, it, because I stepped on it with my right foot, my first thought was, how am I supposed to drive a car? I found a little bit of humor in my accident, but that, that was really the first thought that came into my mind. So, um, actually, I got pulled out of combat and they sent me home. Um, they sent me back to San Diego, and that's where I spent the next year and nine months going through recovery. Um, I had to selectively amputate my right foot, which is these, one of the hardest decisions I've actually had to do. Um, how much was your prosthetic leg and can we see it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I, it, it honestly depends on what it is, right? So the one I'm currently wearing, I would say it's probably about four or $5,000. Huh. Running leg, the one that I actually used to run with, if you see the parallel of the games, it's probably about $6,000 because I think the blade itself is like three grand, but just by itself, not to include the uh, prosthetic. But give me a second, I'll roll up here very shortly. Right? So, um, I worked very hard to not make myself excluded from the rest of the army, right? Um, not giving the army an opportunity to kick me out. So, if my teammates are running, guess who's running? If my teammates are doing deadlifts, guess who's deadlifting? Right? If we're rocking, guess who's rocking? Right? 
I am no different than you. Hi, I'm Amy Sable, principal at Westminster High School, and today we have the opportunity to welcome back one of our very own Lions, Kevin Nguyen, class of 2010. Uh, he's an excellent um, Paralympian. Uh, we're very proud that he chose to come back and speak to our student athlete today about what it takes to get to that next level as an athlete, but also perseverance and how to overcome any obstacles that inevitably we run into uh, throughout life. So today was a great opportunity. Our student athletes thoroughly enjoyed it and uh, we're very grateful that Kevin decided to come back and share his story with us. So, so Kevin, um, you live in Westminster, yes. right? Used to, um, yes. Used to. So what's your memory about Westminster? What do you remember most about Westminster and Little Saigon? I would say the food. Um, you know, the, the buildings and the roads have definitely changed, but as far as like the restaurants and just the environment hasn't really changed much for me. I still know my way around. I still know, you know, I still know Westminster, Golden West, Bolsa, McFadden, Brookhurst, all of that. I, you know, all those streets are still very familiar to me. What I miss the food for the most part. What food do you miss the most? Uh, Brand new. Let's see, I went Don't to, <laughs> no, I went to uh, Lobinki last okay. night with my friends. Uh, uh, Mop. Yeah. Uh, no, Cam Nung Bao Black. Yeah, that's my favorite. Uh, and then for lunch today, I'm actually going to uh, Cam Tam Tan. Oh, it's so good. Of course, you said your lowest point in life was when you had. When you, yes. Can you retell us that? Yeah. So coming back from. Afghanistan the doctors told me that, that they could save my leg. I was like, okay, the damage wasn't too bad. I got really lucky. You know, I can get back in the army. I can keep my feet. Um, come to find out a couple months later that they, I wasn't going to, they weren't able to save my foot. So I had to choose to have it amputated. So it very, it put me in a very depressive mindset of, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with my life now. Like, what is what is my life supposed to supposed to be like moving forward. If I get it amputated, what, what is my quality of life? How do I be an amputee? I didn't know that. There were so many unanswered questions that just consumed my mind. And so just one night I said, I'm, I don't want to feel like this anymore. I hate it. I don't like this feeling. I need to get back up on my feet and find my purpose again. And, and that was to be a soldier in the army. And so. I got up the next morning and I, I, I started to work on myself. I, I got better at my physical fitness. I worked on my walking, I worked on being an amputee, working with my prosthetic to, to just get back on my feet again. And, and you know, I, I pulled myself out after that point and you know, here I am 10 years later. Thank you. Uh, any last word for the high school student or younger generation? Chase your dreams, because you don't know what, this, there's so much the world has to offer. Your life is, is, there's so much more outside of our hometown, right? You just have to, you have to go out there, chase it, experience it, and, and, and really determine for yourself if that's what you want to do. And if that's not what you want to do, that's okay. You know, put yourself out there and find something that's going to give you purpose and it's going to make you fulfilled and it's going to make you happy that you want to do this every single day. You went to Westminster High School? Yes. What do you miss about Westminster High School? Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know if I really miss anything here. I think the teachers. I really, I really enjoyed my time with, you know, just hanging out with the teachers and um, just some of the memories I've created here with uh, my water polo and swim teammates. With being a Paralympic. Yep. How does that benefit you? Uh, it's te it's taught me a lot of resiliency and discipline, and that if I work hard at a goal that I want to achieve, I know that I will get there. Um, and not let failure bring me down. Failures are designed to make us better. It's supposed to be a learning opportunity so that we, it'll help us get to where we need to go. So I'm sure um, not many people have an opportunity to be in the Olympic yeah. or even train for the Olympic. How does that happen? Uh, well, well for start, like? so for starters, uh, you need to pick a sport, an, an Olympic sport start training and work your way up to the national team. I believe there's like 40, 30 plus sports, I believe. Um, 
and find the one that you, you want to be good at and make the national team. Find out where their organization is at. Go to those national competitions so that you can be on the national team to travel overseas and start, you know, gaining rank uh, overseas and, you know, go to their Olympic trials, right? Because three years you're working to make the Olympic team, right? And then the year prior the, or the year of the Olympic Games, you want to go to those trial events in hopes that you will make that Olympic team. But it takes a lot of time, a lot of sacrifice, and a lot of dedication to get there. Sacrifice is the biggest one. You sacrifice a lot of your time. And I know for me, I've sacrificed a lot of time with not only myself, but like family as well, you know, to, to get where I need to go. But having that family support means the world to me because my wife and my son have supported me these last this last year to to help me get where I need to go and I am forever grateful that you know they they were there cheering for me in Paris. You know like I said in it you know during my speech it was just an opportunity that was I was afforded. They it's like hey do you like to do do you like to shoot guns? Do you like to compete? And it's like yeah. It it was just an opportunity that fell in my lap and I rolled with it. I I I took it and I I did the best with, with what I had and Nine years later, here I am, two-time Paralympian. It, it was just an opportunity. I said, let's make the best of it, and, and I did. We can save it, but th this is your option. Number one, uh, I broke these toes right here. I can kind of move this one, and then the big toe is kind of stuck in the up position, but I can like kind of move it up and down. Uh, my heel bone broke in three different places. I had a calcaneus fracture, and then at the bottom of my foot, the base of it, where I would say 90% of the impact was where the most damage about a baseball sized hole underneath the arch of my foot. Uh, by the time I got home to San Diego, the skin, the nerve, the tissue, and the muscle, it was black. It was as black as this podium right here. Right? So all of that was done. It was dead. And so the doctor said, hey, you know, we really need to see what kind of damage it's been done. So they had to cut away. They cut away until they saw the right. I met with the doctors about a week later and she was she understood that she was because, you know, doctors put in the, the surgery and I wasted pounds of their dollars. By June, no, after two weeks of traveling from the battlefield to San Diego, I was down to about 119 pounds at five foot six. And then by late June, I was at 109 pounds prior to my operation. It was probably one of the darkest days my entire life because I was I was consumed by just self-pity, sorrow, and depression. So um, I I got I, you know I worked my way out of that. Um, there's just really no secret sauce to get out of depression. I just told myself, hey man, you really need to stop feeling sorry for yourself and get back up on your feet. When I said that, it was about eight o'clock at night and nothing was open. So I was like, okay, first thing tomorrow morning, and I did. I woke up the very next morning, I went to formation, and I went to go work out. And then after that, I worked my way. So in, in 2016, I actually met some Vietnamese uh, competitive shooters. They were pistol shooters. Um, I think there was like three or four of them at the time. And I don't, I don't put me in a very depressive mindset of, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with my life now. Like, what is what is my life supposed to, supposed to be like moving forward if I get it amputated? So I'm not I'm not sure you realize the significance of it, but what do you think about being Vietnamese American and also being Olympic? Like, so in in 2016, I actually met some Vietnamese. 
uh, competitive shooters. They were pistol shooters. Um, I think there was like three or four of them at the time, and I don't I don't remember his name. I'd have to look it back look back up again. But uh, I met him in Fort Benning. He, they trained at our facility, and that year he won a Olympic gold medal that year. And he was Vietnamese, and he went back home and you know yeah. represented his country well and, and came back Tokyo, home. Right? Uh, Tokyo, Rio. Rio games. Rio games. Yes, for for the Rio games. You know, he and he came back. And you know, everyone cheered him on. Everyone loved him for for the accomplishment that he he had achieved in in 2016. So and so, like I, you know, I'm not the only Vietnamese yeah. athlete out there, yeah. you know. So. All right. Thank you so much. We are going to use this time now to open it up for some questions. All right. So um, there's two ways we can do this. We got like kind of a little question asking station. You can come down and we'll plug the mic in by Miss Sable, and then I have this wireless mic, so if you raise your hand, I will try to get to you, okay? If you want to ask a question, by all means ask it. I do not want to offend me whatsoever. I will freely answer whatever questions you have. All right, here we go. What advice would you give to students who are struggling to focus on their goals? I would say chase it. Like, don't let anyone tell you to stop. Right? If that is your goal, go out and, and chase it. Because like you just you don't know. You don't know until you try. Right? Like, like All so right. many people chase their goals and then they let life get in the way with it. The job, right? Family, school, whatever. Like it, it keeps you from getting where you want to go. Right? If that is your dream. I would say go and chase it and find out if that's what you love, if that is what you want to do, right? It is okay, right? I'm gonna show you a quick story. I met this gentleman last week. This man is 50 years old in the army, right? For 17 years, that man was an F-18 pilot. He flew jets for 17 years before he said, ah, I'm bored, I'm gonna go be a surgeon instead. I was like, Bill, how did you go from a fighter pilot to a surgeon? He's like, I, I just wanted to do something else. And he did. 17 years as a fighter pilot, you know, and I don't know how many years he, he, he's a surgeon, but he is. He, he is a combat surgeon. He uh, spends his time between, you know, working in the trauma center at the, at the local hospital where he's stationed and at his gym. So go and chase your dreams, man. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Go figure out that's what you want to do. How did you stay motivated when facing setbacks or challenges while pursuing your goals? <clears throat> yeah, like, can you be, so I'm, I'm going to extend that question, right? Can you be a little bit more specific, right? I've, I've had a lot of challenges in my life. Like, like through my recovery or as a competitive shooter? How about your leg? There, there's really no secret sauce, you know? I just... Like, for, for the first year, the Army was my entire career. That, I loved that job. There was nothing else I wanted to do. And all of that was, I felt like, to me, was stripped away from me. Right? I didn't have a purpose, I didn't have a drive, I didn't have a goal to work towards. Right? When I was in my platoon, my leaders gave me something to work towards. I had really good leaders that like, I want to be that guy. I want to be that guy someday. Right? And so, like everyone's different. Everyone faces challenges and struggles differently. I just, I really just looked at myself and said, hey man, stop feeling sorry for yourself and get up. And get moving. You know, get to the first light pole. Once you get there, go to the next light pole. Once you get to that one, go to the next one, go to the next one, until you get where you need to go. And like, like my, mine may not be the best, but that's, what, that's how I got myself out of that struggle. Awesome, thank you. We have another question over here on the side. Down over here, here you go. What sport did you play in high school? Uh, so I started with water polo with Mr. Kane. And then, um, naturally, we just progressed to swim afterwards. And so I, I did water polo and swim all four years. What was your 50 free PR? 
Hang on. Let's see if I probably about 25 or so. All right, that was that was my senior year though. Right, I, I probably kind of bounced around about 28, 29. Like our like the years that I spent, our goals were trying to get low 20s. Right, a good buddy of mine, his name's Kyle Chadwick. He's also an alumni here, and he was very consistent at 22. He was trying to break the 22nd barrier. He was trying to get 19, and he came very close. I think he had like a 20.3 or something like that. He was very close. He's probably one of the fastest swimmers that I that I knew at my when I was swimming. Awesome, thank you. We got another question up here. Can you share a moment? Can you share a moment when you felt like giving up and how you pushed through it? Tokyo. I competed so poorly and so badly that um, I I contemplated whether I wanted to continue or not. Competing at, the para, competing at the games is by far the largest stage that you are ever going to compete at. There is no training, there's no environment besides the game stuff that you can actually replicate at home. There, there's no way, you can't replicate that, right? It's, it's a different situation and, and, and it's home feet. So I, I just worked hard to ensure that come match day that I can perform my best every single time and be consistent with it. And so like that was my goal for uh, Paris is to be consistent, right? Uh, a good a good mentor of mine, he, his name is uh, Mr. Jack Ryder. He's a 1972 silver medalist. And he, his one advice was um, shoot your average. Don't expect don't expect yourself to come uh, to shoot higher if you're not already doing it, you know, at home. Right, because if you set your bars really high and you fall short of that, you're just going to come crashing down. So I really work hard to raise my average. All right, question back over here. Um, how much was your prosthetic leg? Like? Can we see it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I, it, it honestly depends on what it is, right? So the one I'm currently wearing, I would say it's probably about four or five thousand dollars. Running blade, the one that I actually used to run with, if you see the parallel game, it's probably about six thousand dollars. I think the blade itself is like three grand, but just by itself, not to include the uh, prosthetics. But if you give me a second, I'll uh, roll up here very short. Right, so um, I worked very hard to not make myself excluded from the rest of the army, right? Um, not giving the army an opportunity to kick me out. So, if my teammates are running, guess who's running? If my teammates are doing deadlifts, guess who's deadlifting, right? If we're rocking, guess who's rocking, right? I am no different than you. I'm gonna do my very best to meet the standard just like everybody else. The only difference is I'm gonna have to work a little bit harder than everybody else. That's what I gotta do. Man, that is so cool. Thank you so much. We have another question right here in the front. Các em học sinh thân mến, các em có sẵn sàng để nâng các kỹ năng của mình lên mức cao hơn chưa? Hãy sẵn sàng đi, bởi vì học khu trung học Huntington Beach đang bổ sung thêm các lớp giáo dục kỹ thuật nghề hay CTE trong niên học tới. Cho dù em thích về kỹ thuật, y tế, kinh doanh hay các ngành nghề khác, đều sẽ có lớp ưa thích cho mỗi người. Các lớp CTE được thiết kế để cho học sinh có trải nghiệm thực tế trong đời sống. Hãy tận dụng cơ hội này để phát triển các kỹ năng đáng giá, giúp các em chuẩn bị cho sự thành công. Các lớp CTE sẽ khác nhau, tùy vào các trường trong học khu. Em nhớ hỏi chuyên gia hướng dẫn của mình để xem các lớp nào được dạy ở trường em. Đừng bỏ mất cơ hội này để khám phá về các đam mê và tiềm năng của mình. Honestly, just be consistent, right? Like, if it works, don't change it just just to change something. Like, for me, um, when I first started competing, it was I, I would change a lot of things. I would change my position a lot. I'd make a lot of changes just to make a change because it just wasn't working, right? I found what worked and then kept it that way. Only made changes 
if it was going to prove beneficial for me in the long run. If I made a change and it kind of worked for the moment, but it didn't work the next day, I'm putting it back. All right, because if it worked the day before, there's no reason why it can't work the very next day. All right, so just be consistent and, and trust yourself. All right, back over here. How did you uh, balance your short-term obstacles with your long-term goals? I had really good examples. I have a really, really solid team, right? Um, on our competition team, we have one, two, three, four, five. We have five Olympians. Uh, in our office. Sarah McPhail is a three-time Olympian Sajin. She's a two-time Olympian and a Paris silver medalist. Ali Wise is an Olympian. Ivan Rowe is an Olympian. The people who have come before me, Eric Aptograph, I believe he's a three-time Olympian. Jason Parker, my first boss, he's a four-time Olympian. Right? And so like those goals were achievable, right? And I had right team and the right people to help me get where I needed to go. And so I, because I didn't come from the sport, I, they just gave me the right answer and a role with it. But these, my teammates have been doing it since they're, they were your age or younger. Right? They have, when they come onto the team, they have 10 plus years worth of competitive shooting experience and training. I'm learning this for the very first time. And so I really, really lean heavily on my teammates. Right? It's like, hey, I'm trying to get to here. How do I get there? It's like, okay, what are you doing right now? Okay, that sounds good. Let's let's re let's let's tailor that a little bit. Let's make some changes so it pushes you in the right direction. So I have really good teammates to really lean on to help me get where I need to go. And their work ethic is by far one of the one of the best things about being, being on that team is that when you think you're doing good, your teammates are doing a little bit better. So like their work ethic definitely bled out on me. So like any time that I was like slacking, I would look to them and be like, man, I'm all slacking today. I need I need to get into some extra reps. So I hope that helps. Awesome, thank you. All right, I know a lot of you guys are trying to flag me down for questions, but we only probably have time for one more. So here we go. Uh, yes, so I, so as a Paralympian, I met uh, Matt Stewson. Uh, if you don't know who he is, he is the arms archer. He was born without arms. He is a world championship in para archery, and recently he's actually a Paralympic gold medalist in archery. He's probably one of the nicest dudes I've ever met. Uh, funny story is I actually met him in Tokyo in the laundry room. We're, we're, we're dropping off laundry, and I met him. I've kind of been following him for a little while, but it just, just by happenstance, I ran into him, and he's a pretty, pretty cool dude. So, as far as like, as far as like Paralympians, you know, us in the Open Olympics, we don't really like mingle together. So, you know, my some of the famous people are going to be Paralympic athletes, but you know, I mean, we train at the same spot as everybody else. Like, in uh, 2016, Paralympic Michael Phelps spent a week before he went out to Rio and won all those medals. All right, I know, I see some of you raising your hands. We only got one minute until the bell rings. Um, I just wanted to close this off by, let's give them a, another round of applause, as loud as we can, come on. Yeah, we, we thank you so much for being here. Um, you're truly a hero and a role model uh, to all these students, so thank you again for all the words and the stories. If you guys have questions, hold on, hold on, hold on. If you guys have individual questions and you want to ask them, you can come up. And even more importantly, please make sure you clean up all your trash. And you guys can go check out all of his medals that are over to the side. There are some uh, baseball cards with my signature on it. You guys are free to grab them if you'd like. Thank you again, guys, for everything. Sorry if we couldn't get to your questions.
cảm ơn mọi người uh, đã coi chương trình trên, uh, trên đài uh, Little Saigon Little Saigon TV. Alright, thank you guys.